Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. I am here for you every Friday with some kind of doll art or possibly some other kind of art depending on what I've done that week. So this week I thought I would tell some stories about ghosts and things gothic and bump in the night and some of my experiences that I've had personally. I thought about looking up a story, but so many people have already told all of the stories on YouTube if you want to go through and look for them. So I decided to just tell one that I know no one's told because it's mine. So without further ado, I will briefly cover this doll. This is a Jean doll and I had been asked on my Patreon page and you can go to my Patreon at any time. I have a bunch of videos there. They're all real time painting and full explanations of everything I do, including this doll. She's a Jean Marshall and the goal was to use only black and white. So that's all I used. So when you look down below and there's not going to be much in the supply section, just mostly black and white paint and pan pastels and some spray and stuff like that. Anyway, so let me go forward with my storytelling. When I was, I've always been a little bit sensitive and I don't know how else to put it. I don't want to come across as a weirdo or anything like that because I really don't practice anything. Um, you know, not really, but I've always been sensitive to things around me since I was little. And, uh, I'm not sure if it was because my mother introduced us to things early on. I'm not sure if it's because we traveled a lot as kids, um, but I've always been a little bit sensitive to my surroundings and I can tell you, I can feel when something's here and when something's not. I keep sage around, let me just put it that way, and it, it, it's just for burning, you know, uh, what do they call it? Smudging. I have to smudge sometimes. I'm going to try to explain first what happens for me because everybody is different. For me, when I say I'm sensitive, um, I used to hear voices. I don't anymore. Um, that went away after I think I shut it down. And I, that's what my mom or my sister will say that I've just shut everything down because honestly it scares me. So I don't, I don't want to be sensitive and I really don't want any part of it, but I think I might be the kind of sensitive that can feel people who have passed. So what I feel, I don't actually see anything. And honestly, I know people who I have seen things. I know people who have seen things, but generally speaking, I don't see anything with my eyes. I can just feel it. And then the weird part is, is when I close my eyes, I can, I can see, I can see it with my eyes, like in my, in my head, I can see it. So let's, it's, it's the weirdest sensation. Almost sounds like a movie. I can look in my living room, for instance. I could just be sitting on my couch, maybe watching TV, and I can sense a presence in there. And I can, I know it's a woman. I can kind of sense the age. I can see her in my mind. I can tell how she died. And I can feel her feelings. So that's, that's what I experience. I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to put this on YouTube. I mean, honestly, it's just, I know a lot of people think it's weird, but that's, that's, that's what I feel. 
So when I was young, when I was really young, I did see things. And I'll, I'll never know for sure if I saw them or if I dreamt them. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't know because you're a kid. So, and it was so long ago. We had moved to England when I was seven, I believe, six or seven. And we rented this mansion. It was like a mansion. And it had, it was beautiful. It had a lot of rooms and everything. And it had a very creepy basement. And there was a lot of activity in that house, I'm sure. You know, because it was a really old house. So, I can't really remember any experiences per se in that house. Just the feelings of it. But after we left there, we went to this, we went to Wales. And we stayed in this house called the wheelhouse and the wheelhouse we called it that because there was a big wheel sticking out of the out of the dirt you know in the front like a big giant wheel and there was a, some woods next to it and we stayed there I, I want to say it was about a week or so anyway my sister and I stayed there for about a week because we ended up flying back to Texas to to see my dad so we go out in the woods and we find like a kettle like your typical cauldron type witch's cauldron. And we made up a story that it was the witch's garden and all of that business. So when we go back in, I guess there weren't enough rooms in the house for everyone. So my, my sister had a room, my brother had a room, and I was sleeping on the couch in the living room. This was like a, a guest house. It was all furnished and everything. So I was asleep. And I don't know if you guys have seen the haunting of Hill House, but um, this is not this is not the kind of show that settles well with me. I like to watch it, but I end up being so scared uh, for m like a month after. It takes me a long time to recover. But there was a scene where she was floating. This lady was floating over a child on the couch. And that would be my description of how I felt in the wheelhouse. Like, that happened to me. Only it spoke and said, get out of my garden. So, there was an old, a witch, and she was floating over me, and she said that. Now, was I dreaming? Um, maybe. I could have been. I was a child, so how would I know? But, um... I remember getting up and running and getting in bed with my sister. <laughs> so that didn't last. So time goes by and we move into a house in Houston. And my mom started kind of playing with the Ouija board. And then we all were playing with the Ouija board. This is a bad idea. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't get one. Don't play with one. Don't mess with one. There was so much activity in that house that was unexplained. Walking in the attic, there was, the radio would turn on randomly in the middle of the night. There was just a lot of creepiness going on in that house. And I had a really, really hard time sleeping. So, I would call it, I mean, at that time, it wasn't really, but later on, I started having kind of night terrors where I would just like, it was just, it was like I was being constantly bombarded with these feelings and emotions. Later, and this is the strangest story, as an adult, I went and had a regression. The regression was taped, and when I got home, I ripped the tape up and threw it away. That's how upsetting it was for me. So on the on the regression, you know, that's just where you're going to go and be hypnotized. And I had never been hypnotized before. And you will experience your past lives, you know, or at least one of them. So I lay down on the little loungy chair and I close my eyes and the guy counts me down and I'm hypnotized. And the weird part is, is I'm so aware. I'm there. I'm awake. But I'm not there. I don't know. It's almost like you're sitting like in a corner. And you're just observing. 
at that point. Like I didn't have control over my body. I didn't have any control over what was coming out of my mouth. So the guy's just asking me questions. I can't really remember because like I said, this was back when I was in my 20s and I ripped that, that tape up. So I saw my first thing that I saw was a man. I could see a reflection of him in the glass. He had been in a, like a, he was embarrassed to say that he was in a strip club. So he was in a strip club. I could see everything from my eyes, but he was the one, it, it was him that was there. And he was, the guy was like, where are you? And he was, he said through me, I don't want to say, I don't know if he ever actually said it out loud, but he went outside and looked in the glass of the window and I could see him and he had like a mustache and like a brown 70s outfit on, which made no sense whatsoever. I was born in 1965. So this guy could not be, I could not, he couldn't be part of my, you know, past life because he would have died after. So he turns around and he steps into the street and he, uh, I could see the headlights and a woman's face. And I think a car hit him and killed him is what happened. I could see the whole thing like really fast. And so what the regressionist explained to me after, because there were more people in there like this that were not people who I was, not my past lives, but souls that had attached to me. How about that? I was like, what? And one of them, <laughs> okay, you guys are probably never going to watch my videos again, but one of them was a dark entity that called himself David. I can't remember the rest of their names, but I remember him and he was holding all of them inside of me trapped. And then the guy led them to the light and I could see the light. I could see it opening up and he was talking them t toward it. And then, um, David didn't want to let go. And he, the regressionist told him to look down and he did. And he was like, what do you see? And he was like, black, 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 black. And when I looked down, I swear, I thought I saw like a devil down there or a demon of some kind. It was scary as hell. So he led them to the light. And then suddenly I just came out of the hypnosis, like, like, <gasps> like that. It's the only way I could describe it. So I came out of it and I'm like, are they gone? Are they gone? That's all I could say to, to the regressionist. I was, it was very upsetting and unsettling. And then after that, I could like, my mind would not shut down. I always heard voices, but they were just bombarding me. Like the voices in my head were so loud. And at that time, my ex-husband was really mad. He was like, that guy messed with your brain. There's something wrong with you. And because I was just night terror after night terror, like it was constant. I was constantly afraid. And I just like willed it to go away. And after, I guess, a few months, the voices just disappeared. And I didn't ever hear them again. I still don't. And... Um, Maybe they just were gone. I don't know if the guy messed with my brain. I really couldn't tell you or gave me suggestions. When I listened back to the tape, you can't, I don't know anything about hypnosis. So I don't know if he was suggesting this to me or if I was, you know, inventing it for my imagination or if it happened. How do I know? All I know is I will never get regressed again. Like you can forget about it. That will never happen. I don't like to mess with it any of it. I don't care for it. So now what happens is occasionally, and I do have another story where I actually did see something, but now what happens is I, I can sense things in the house when they're here and I hate it so much. I hate it so much. It's really hard for me to describe because I'll go right back into night terrors and, um, I will just lay in bed and I'll be 
almost paralyzed. You know, I'll be afraid to turn over and look. I'll be afraid to move. I'm awake, not sleeping terror. I mean, just awake. And I can feel whatever presence is, it is. And they, they, they hover. They like to sit by my bed. They squat. They, um, or they just walk around the house. And I, I hate it. Right now, I don't have anything. Thank you. I haven't had anything for a couple of weeks. So I'm really grateful about that. I just go to bed at night and I'm just so peaceful and so thrilled that I can go to sleep <laughs> and there's no feelings of negativity. I really need to be even talking about it worries me that I will, it'll come back, you know, but I'm going to tell the story now about my one experience where I actually did see things. So my mom rented a house out in Florida, sort of in the sticks. Um, on an old orange grove and it was a pretty good size house and I moved in there when I was about 22 that's when I first moved to Florida and she had the Ouija board again and my cousin Kelly and I spent some time playing with that Ouija board talking a lot to the Ouija board to whatever we thought we were talking to and um, at one point we were playing with it and her boyfriend was in the kitchen, you know, looking at us like we were crazy. We weren't moving it. I mean, I'm pretty sure she wasn't and I wasn't either, but it, it flew so fast we couldn't have moved it that fast. And we started asking questions about him, things that she didn't know, things that I didn't know about him. And as we were relaying the information to him about himself, he got physically ill. He threw up. Like seriously, he got physically ill. It was creepy. So I think at that point we realized we should not be playing with this anymore. That that was it. You know, it still sends like chills up the back of my spine. There are some things in this world that are just not explainable. I have a healthy skepticism, but I have seen things that just make me uncomfortable. So I was up late one night in that house doing homework. I was going to a little community college and I was doing some homework. So I'm sitting, I'm really, really tired. Um, but I'm awake cause I'm doing homework and, um, I could, I looked up at one point and there was like a face just floating. Oh my gosh. I can just feel this, like the tingly on the back of my neck. Cause it just gives me the creeps. So this face is floating. And I can see it. And as soon as I make contact with it, it like flies toward me. And the only thing I could do was cover my face, you know, with my hands. And I jumped up from the table and I ran into, it was like a, it was a room off next to my mom's bedroom. It was like a, 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 a patio room, I guess, enclosed. But my stepfather was asleep on the couch in there. And I was sitting on the edge of the couch just like, you know, like my heart was pounding. And then all of a sudden I see these float. I mean, the only way I could describe it was poltergeist. I don't know if you saw that in the movie where the spirits were like sort of just floating around in the room. It was like that. And they were like white misty shapes floating around the room. And I was like, Oh my God. So I run into my mom's room and I jump into bed with her and I'm like, mom, 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 mom. There's, there's, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. There's ghosts everywhere, mom. And mom's like passed out. And she's just like, just tell him to go away. I was like, um, so I look over next to the, like next to the side of the bed, the other side opposite from where my mom was. And there were two spirits in prayer kneeling next to the bed. So I was like, all right, that's it. I'm done. I jumped out of bed. I ran into there, got my purse, got my keys, and I left. I went to my cousin's and spent the night at her apartment. I don't remember when I came back <laughs> to the house, but I can tell you that I have never messed with a Ouija board again. Those are some of my experiences with the supernatural. There's probably some things I'm not thinking of, maybe in another video if I remember them, but I can tell you this. I don't like it. <laughs>
And there's other people's stories too, but I don't want to tell other people's stories, you know what I mean? Because that's their business. But don't mess with uh, the supernatural and don't mess with um, Ouija boards and definitely smudge. I wonder if you can hear the rain. It has been raining on and off for the last two days. Actually, it's super pleasant. Okay, the last story I have to tell is, um, remember I said I had night terrors? And those, are, those were when I wouldn't be able to sleep. But I had a different kind of night terror that's super common, apparently. It's where you're sleeping and you wake up and it feels like something's pressing you down into your bed and you can't move and you're paralyzed. Well, the truth is, is you are actually paralyzed because I think your body goes into paralysis while you sleep. So it's like sleep paralysis is, is, is the, I think, official name for it. But what it feels like is that you are being held down by some un, unseen force. I experienced this for a couple of years and I didn't know what was causing it, but I was sure that I was being attacked, like literally attacked by um, something I couldn't see. It was, it was terrorizing. I can't think of another word. And then my, my sister-in-law told me about that she had taken a class in college and she was told about this she told me and once she told me it never happened again it's almost like knowledge will set you free so um gosh i hope you guys don't think i'm super crazy i, I have a lot of scary experiences as a child and i think that probably affected me into adulthood i don't i don't know what really happened all those different times but <laughs> Don't mess with the Ouija board is the moral of the story. And, you know, just don't. <laughs> anyway, I, go, I hope you guys have a great week. See you next Friday. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. If you like dolls and art, please like and subscribe for new videos every Friday. Comment below if there's something you'd like to see from me. Thank you so much. I will see everyone next week. Bye. Thank you.